Let's pick apart stick control a little bit. This is gonna be kind of a, also a follow-up to, I did a lesson on fulcrum and its role in our, in our technique, and I did a, um, a lesson on um, rebound, how important that is. Got super nerdy about that. And, and I wanna do a similar thing with, stick, with, uh, with finger control, um, whether you're using French grip, which is going to be the hand uh, or the, the thumb pointing towards the ceiling, hand all the way over, American grip, which will be halfway in between the two, or German grip, which will be your thumbs facing each side. Um, you can use finger control in each one of those, and it's a little bit different within each one of those. But the purpose of this video is to give you a way to troubleshoot your finger control, because all too often I have drummers and I have students come in and they say, I'm, you know, I'm having trouble with finger control. And, um, and this is what they're doing. You know, they're just like over and over, just trying to get it to go, we can't get it to go. And they're just like doing the same thing over and over. And, and uh, you know, that's the definition of insanity, people. like. Doing the same thing the same way and expecting to get different results is not going to work. It never has worked. So what we have to do is we have to have a system for troubleshooting things. And that's what this is going to be. It's simply three steps that you can go through to troubleshoot your finger control. Okay? Um, and the first step is we have to realize that with finger control, there are five of these guys, unless you've lost one or you're abnormally weird and you have an extra one, in which case, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but we have to figure out which finger is giving us the issue. So our technique's okay, we're making use of our fulcrum, we're getting good rebound, but when it comes to finger control, we, we just don't have it. It's going to be a specific finger one of the fingers is going to be the culprit, where if your left hand is, is significantly slower than your right hand with finger control or it doesn't have as much control, it's going to boil down to which finger is it that is affecting the overall stroke. You might be like, Stephen, no, it's just overall. No, there's a particular finger that is lagging behind the others and you gotta fix it. It may be all of them, but they may be varying different degrees. This is what I call going like meta. We gotta go deep on this topic to understand and to fix it, okay? So uh, the first thing is, is figure out which finger it is. For instance, for me and my own finger control, whenever I'm playing, uh, I have worked for years and still work on these last two fingers, particularly the pinky, uh, but also the ring finger. They're both the culprit. They're both just, they, they're just not there. Um, and, and it's depressing. You work it for years and you're like, will they ever be there? Um, and, and they will. They're getting better, but it's incremental, you know. It's, it's all about the journey. There's not a destination. We're not like you reach some certain speed and you're like, I'm a god of drumming. It's not about that. It's about the journey and learning as we go and developing. And so, when I, when I began looking very closely at my finger control, because my left hand, I, I noticed that it was just not as in control as my right hand. I thought, oh, I need to do control better. It, that wasn't the issue. The issue was, it was these two particular fingers on this particular hand. So what I had to do was not isolate all of them. I needed to isolate those two specifically and prioritize them in my, in my practice time. Okay? And that is, uh, that is, that is kind of, kind of a, a, a precursor to uh, what step three is going to be. But first you have to identify which finger is the problem. Once you've done that, then we have to figure out specifically what the problem is with that finger. Okay? Is it control or is it strength? And control comes on both sides of strength. Let me show you how that works. So control is, I just don't have any control. The stick is going this way and that whenever I, I don't know why I keep, keeps trying to get in the lesson, um, keeps going this way and that whenever I'm playing. Okay, that's a control issue. And what I would do then is I would specifically segment that finger. I will never play this way whenever I'm playing on a gig. It's just not gonna happen. But in my practice time, I play this way a lot because I'm isolating the individual fingers. So what I would do is I would isolate that finger and I would begin to dissect and go, okay, once I can get this to where I can control it, and I would set my, my metronome, once I can get it to where I can co control it at quarter notes at 80 BPM, then I'll know that I'm fixing that problem, okay? But then you say, well, Stephen, what do you mean? Is it a strength issue? Okay, on my right hand, I have significant more strength in my fingers than my left hand. 
I've developed my left hand a lot over the past few years, really been focusing on it in my practice time. Um, and so, uh, so, but when I, when I started looking at this stuff, I mean, it was crazy difference. I had way more control and way more strength. What I found was I didn't have the strength to get the rebound I needed to actually get the stroke going. And so that was the next thing I did. Once I stopped, once, I, once the stick stopped doing the wobble, and I'm like, okay, cool. Now I need to work on my strength. So I would set it to like 90 BPM and I would play half notes and I would just focus on throwing that stick as hard as I could with that finger, trying to get it to come back to the same point that whenever I throw with my right hand, because used to whenever I threw with my left hand, it only come back about right here. My right was coming way back here. So first it was a control issue, then it was a strength issue, and then it was a control issue again. What do we mean? Well, now we've got a lot of strength, but now we've got to learn to control that strength in that we've got to be able to play uh, subdivisions at a specific tempo in time. Okay. So first, is it control or is it strength or is it control on the other side of strength? Once we get strength, we have to learn how to control that strength. So that's step two. The first step is figure out which finger it is. The second step is figure out exactly what the issue is. Is it control, strength, which side of strength is that control on? And the third uh, step is going to be isolate that. It's, it's real simple. This is, you know, people try to make things way too hard. It's not hard. You figure out what the problem is, dive into it and figure out exactly what, or figure out where the problem is, figure out exactly what the problem is, and then isolate the problem. That is how we practice. And it's the same thing with finger control. So when I'm going into this, I'm going to start isolating this finger for large amounts of time. I'm not just going to mindlessly sit down and do finger control in ger French grip or in German grip with that, with that whole hand. I'm going to specifically work on those fingers for long periods of time and ignore the rest of the hand because it's up to speed. And then later, weeks later, we'll bring it back together and try to, try to put it all back together. Okay, but until I get that finger up to speed with the rest of the hand, you're going to continue to have problems. If this is how you're working finger control just over and over and over mindlessly, you're screwing around. It's not going to work. You have to isolate what the actual issue is. And then once you've isolated that, figure out what the problem is, and then we have to work on that specific problem, ignoring the rest of it. That's going deep on something, okay? And a lot of you have never done this with your technique. You're like, oh, I just can't play finger control. No, there's a deeper issue there. Yeah, I agree, you can't play finger control, but what's the issue? Why can't you play finger control? Well, so when we start going through, it's like, okay, well, starting with the first finger, that's the issue. So I start with that with my students. It's like, until we can get this finger going in German, can, you know, we're not, oh, your fingers aren't on the stick. Yeah, I know. Thanks for that. It's because I'm trying to isolate it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to use that on a gig. I'm not going to be on a ride cymbal doing this thing. That's not going to happen. I'm not going to do this on a gig. It's just not going to happen. But I am in my practice time. I'm going to isolate this. And then I'm going to isolate this finger. And once I get them all, then I'm going to put them together. And now I have complete control. Then I'm going to go to French grip or American grip, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to develop exercises where I can switch in between the different fingers so that I can do, so that I have the same strength with all of them. Once they're all the same strength, then, then we can work on overall finger control. And you'll be amazed. Once you isolate that, troubleshoot it, really work on it, how quickly the rest of it comes around. Like, seriously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come around. So... If you want to go deeper on this stuff, uh, these are just like, you know, macro overviews of these topics. If you want to go deeper, you can grab a membership at the website. That's always available. But these, these are here for you, too, just to kind of help you troubleshoot these issues as well. I've got a new free series. Uh, it's uh, it's um, Developing a Drum Fill Vocabulary. It's three-lesson series. Jump over the website. That's completely free. I'll put the link below this video. But I urge you, whatever you do. Go in depth on these topics. Don't just sit there redundantly every day and go, I guess I'll focus on finger control. That's not how we do it. We focus on finger control by going, okay, cool, this is the issue. I'm going to throw this and try to get strength. And then I'm going to try to get control. And then I'm going to put all the fingers back together. And then I'm going to put it with my right hand. That's what we do. We isolate these things in practice time. It's called miniature feedback loops. We have to do that. But until you do that, you're going to continue to have finger control problems. If you've got questions on this, you can put them down in the comment section. I love hearing for you. If it helped you, give it a thumbs up or just share it with somebody uh, that you think it may help. As well, you can always email me with questions that you have. Uh, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. So hopefully this will help you troubleshoot your own finger control.